Ever since the height of the Cold War, the threat of a nuclear apocalypse has always been present. The general narrative is that all humanity would be wiped out by this, and that's probably a good guess between the massive explosions, radiation, and the ensuing nuclear winter where untold millions of tons of dust kicked up into the atmosphere by the thousands of explosions would dim the sun's rays for years and all but eliminate agriculture across the globe. However, a recent study has suggested it might be possible for survivors to obtain certain types of food, if not standard agricultural crops. And by the way, the survivors would probably be in the thousands, not millions, and would likely all be in the southern hemisphere so if you're watching from south america or africa or southern asia perhaps this is you for all of us north american people this is you know just nice to know information it won't be particularly relevant the article points out that the world's agriculture systems would be decimated for at least 15 years because of the nuclear winter but by focusing on what they call wild edible plants or weps there could be a path for avoiding starvation for a select few of the global population. So what would people eat in a nuclear winter? Well, for a full list, you can check out the paper link below, but I'll just highlight a couple of the more interesting ones. So we have palm weevils, and the argument here is that some of these grubs are up to 60% fat and 10% protein, and many species have higher protein quality than beef or chicken. Like other grubs, palm weevils can be dried or roasted and milled into powder that can be incorporated into flour mixes or soups. Palm weevils can be farmed and grown over a short 21-day growth cycle using palm husks or other organic materials as a substrate, so they point out that you could just have a palm weevil farm in your shelter, wherever it was that you were you were hiding. So another food they highlight is the wild oyster mushroom, and they point out that it's a good source of protein, minerals, and vitamins, but also compared to other common mushrooms, it's able to produce enzymes that are able to help it digest many different types of substrates, uh, woody substrates in particular, and agricultural wastes, which could make it a, uh, a more robust source of food than some other mushrooms. They also highlight wild spinaches of the netum genus, which are shade-dwelling vines harvested from the wild by cutting down the trees they grow on for their spinach-like leaves. Cooked like spinach, they're usually added to soups and are considered a staple food for many people's diets. Finally, the baobab tree, uh, known as one of the most useful living entities, is also highlighted. It's a highly valued tree across all sub-Saharan Africa. And it says the leaves, seeds, and fruit of this tree are commonly eaten and have long-term storage capabilities with vitamins and minerals. In addition, the baobab trunks can store several thousand liters of water for long periods of time without spoilage. So you can imagine this would be a pretty useful resource in the event of a nuclear winter and the accompanying drought. So overall, the post-apocalypse conditions would be very dark, cool, and dry but it, it, it may be possible for a small subset of humanity, specifically those in the tropics and um, close to it, to survive through these years by subsisting on these wild edible plants and forageable insects. The authors do want to make it clear that, quote, by no means should this study be seen as a suitable remedy for the effects of nuclear war and therefore encourage nuclear war as a feasible option. So I think I gathered that from the fact that this paper still points out that this would probably be only a couple of thousand people that would survive this catastrophe, and those who did survive would have to spend 15 years shivering in the dark, eating insects and pulp from a baobab tree, uh, but still it's important to point that out, I suppose. So this has been a brief exploration of what people would eat during the ensuing nuclear winter. Overall, I think it seems pretty clear that this is something that we don't want to happen, so uh, that should probably be our plan A. But it is nice to know that potentially, if there was a nuclear apocalypse, there's a chance that humanity would be able to survive. So thanks so much for watching, and let me know if you liked the video or if there are topics you'd like me to address in the future. Bye.